Hey YouTube, it's your girl Dr. J and I am doing Mahogany Homemakers Vlog Hop and this is vlog number three where we were to talk about our curriculum plan planning, what are the things that we're doing, all that kind of fun stuff and I'm going to bring back out the sheet you guys know that I use for each of my kids that we we plan for the week with this sheet. So it has the categories and how many times we're going to hit those categories. So for instance, my kids, um, their reading program that they use is called Easy Read. And it is a computer-based program and it has five boxes because we're going to hit that every day in a week. And so for our basic things that we're going to hit every day, that is going to be a set package for us, Easy Read, um, Stanford's uh, EPGY program for language arts for my oldest and for math for all three kids. So those are going to be the, the standard programs that we're going to use every day. Now, after that, planning gets more difficult for me. And I'm going to show you guys why in a minute. The only thing that I'm going to cover is language arts and, and reading, spelling, and math because everything else, if, if I added in all this other stuff, this will be way too long. So basically, you guys know with my philosophy, we never use just one thing. We always pull from a lot of different sources so my kids can get things a lot of different ways. So since I know that they're gonna get the basics of reading and language arts from one way, but with those programs, they're only gonna have 20 minute or 15 minute sessions for each thing. So it's not going to be a lot of time that they're going to be on the computer for that day. So then I start to add in other things. Okay, what's another way that we can hit language arts? So, um, and I'm going to be putting books around and stuff, so I'm sorry. So another thing that we are going to use is going to be, as they come crashing down, uh, Sylvan's Super Reading Success Books. This is third grade for my oldest and so I will just pull pages out I actually take pages out so these are consumable books we don't copy them but I don't keep the pages in the book I will tear them out and let him know you know does he need to do the front and the back or just the front and these a lot of these they're good but they tend to be a little bit more game based a little bit more laid back which is what I like I don't want to be stressing my kids out so this is what we're going to use. This, this is how we're going to check some of those language arts boxes. Another way we're going to check some of those language arts boxes are with these type of books. I love these. Um, this one is on apostrophe and suffix. And I tend to buy the whole set. So there will be like 20 books in the set. I'll get those. We also have these books. They take about five minutes for us to read you know what is an adverb and this one you know, what is a synonym we have you know what is a noun what is a verb you know a new, another look at nouns and verbs so we use those two love those so you know we read a book check a box and then more type grammar books miscellaneous this is the cutest book I mean, just amazing book on language and, and clarity and language and vocabulary. So this is a great book. Look, I highly recommend it. Another way we would check boxes, things like this with daily word ladders. And these are really fun because you start with, you know, a word like for this one. I'm sorry, I'm still learning my camera. Dig. And then, you know, it'll say, okay, another word for large, change the first letter. Okay, that'll be big. Okay, you carry things in this. I have a towel in my beach, change the vowel. So instead of big, it becomes bag. So, and then they work that up. So they would do that. Another, check the box. That was language arts. Sometimes we do things that are more, um, this one, it's a, it's a, it's a CD. So it's different songs that the kids do like blends and things like that. So a song, so you know, they get to listen to the CD, jump around, check the box. We did it. 
we have tons of these type of things like these are uh, flashcards on homophones but we have them on similes metaphors now contractions anything you can think of I have like a whole set of those these are from super duper publications and these are used actually by a lot of occupational therapists in the school system so I love that because it hits a lot of areas for us and sometimes we don't read the books we watch the books so we have these different DVDs Harold and the Purple Crayon and it has lots of different episodes of Harold and the Purple Crayon Chrysanthemum these are from Scholastic but I think you can get the box set from Costco it's amazing it's fun it follows the book word for word so it's not like they made this cartoon and they completely changed it it is literally the pages of the book come to life and then they um, as they go through the book the words are highlighted so language arts love that I love it the kids enjoy it sometimes they just watch it for fun but sometimes it's something that I assign during our school day when it comes to math again EPGY is our base but on top of that we will hit um, at times sorry for going off camera but we have Singapore math these are challenging word problems so I have one of my children is doing second grade math so for her this is her challenging word problem book and then this is the first grade book third grade book and you know my, my kids they generally uh, go about up a grade level of math about every uh, on average about three months so like my my one that's doing first grade math he's probably about a couple weeks away from going into second grade math so the books I just jump with them so we have the challenging word problems books all the way through sixth grade so that should get me through this year this entire school year so I my third grader he will probably be pretty firmly um, into sixth grade math by the end of the school year so about May time frame of 2014 so we have him covered through there um, if he slows down a little bit because he's about halfway through first gr third grade so I'm sure he'll be into fourth grade at least maybe fifth grade if he slows down which would be fine with me so um, but we're covered no matter how fast or slow he goes we also do you guys know we do life of Fred so we're on Life of Fred books. So you have Life of Fred, and we were covered through, y'all know we're covered through trigonometry with Life of Fred. So we have all the books, so they can go as slow as they please or as fast as they please. Every time we sit down with Life of Fred, we tend to do a chapter, an entire chapter, but we don't do it every week. You know, we might do it twice a month. So the kids like it, but we tend to do so many things that we don't, you know, say, okay, we have to do Life of Fred you know every day or every week we don't do that some other books that we use to check the box um, these books are great the math start books and we have like all the different levels from first through I think we go up to uh, level three and they're they're really fun books like this one is on um, different addition strategies so and we have them you know they cover lots of stuff uh, you know less than zero so they they have a book on going into negative numbers they have books on you know shapes and sizes and all that kind of stuff we also do things like this Pythagoras what's your angle angle we do Prim Primrose the mathematical cat we do I mean we have tons and tons and tons of math books that we sit down and read so and that's like our math supplements we'll sit down and read math books and we're big fans of the teaching company so sometimes they will sit down and watch some of the lectures this one is on the joy of mathematics a really awesome like this this one covers like the joy of trigonometry and the joy of um, number E and infinity and infinite series so it's not so much that they have to do the math this just talks about about why these sort of math concepts are fun why do people enjoy math so that's what this series is about and this one this is teaching company fundamentals of math and 
it's lecture based it's kind of taking you through um, starting with addition and subtraction and it goes all the way through like probability introduction to statistics and probability and stuff and it's just like Khan Academy but on DVD so I can take that in the car with us as opposed to having to you know be at a computer so that's kind of you know some of the stuff uh, we also have a lot of games so we have language arts based games we have math based games and so what I'm looking for is I'm always going to when I plan our week because you know we do a version of what boxes that's week based so when I plan our, our, our week I kind of think about what's our schedule gonna be like and then how are the kids doing how are they feeling and then I will start grabbing grabbing things off the shelf that we're going to use for that week to supplement some of the other things that they're doing. So if I know that we're going to have a busy week, we may uh, do some of our supplement by watching DVDs while we're in the van. So we may, you know, watch DVDs about books or the books on DVD. Um, we may do, um, I may take some of our math start books with us so that we can read those books while we're waiting for music practice or waiting for dance or or if I have you know one person that's in vision therapy I'm gonna be reading to the other two people who are not in vision therapy at that time so the checklist just allows me to make sure that we're hitting everything that I wanted to make sure that we hit that we're getting a lot of rotation and it also helps me to sit back and use all of the stuff that I have because you guys know I have a lot of stuff and it's not there to just sit on the shelf and look pretty I bought it for a reason and I have to make sure that I find a way to implement it into our schooling and so that's the way that I can make sure that we're hitting all those things by having my check sheet and saying okay the kids are you know working on this type of math you know, my son is, okay, he's working on balanced equations. What are some hands-on ways that we can hit balanced equations? Do I have a DVD that focuses on balanced equations? Do we have a book that's going to also reinforce balanced equations? So that's really how I'm going to um, hit things. And then also at least once a week, we're going to do something that's above their level. That's going to be a little higher level for them to reach for. You guys know one of the struggles that I have is that my kids are, they're functioning at, you know they're at the 98 and 99 percent um, correct in their language arts and their math and that's too high I need to get them to a point where they're struggling a little bit to teach them resilience to teach them how to persevere and they just haven't reached the point of struggle yet and so we're trying to balance that so that's why I introduce things that might be a little above their level but they get it so like we're going to do a unit on time that I'm going to create. And in addition to learning about clocks and how to tell time and the history of time, we're also going to go over things like the space-time continuum, something that they're going to have to reach for, that they're going to have to really, you know, rack their brain a little bit to learn how to wrap their mind around it to give them a little bit of challenge. So that's another thing that I try to balance when I'm doing our day. So when it comes to curriculum, it ain't easy in this house because I have lots of different levels, only three kids, but lots of different levels and a lot of different things I'm trying to balance. So I'm actually calling what I do stuff-based homeschool because we got stuff and we use a lot of stuff. So hope that helps. Uh, Mahogany Homemaker, thank you for the vlog. Ha, it has been fun so far and hope you enjoy. Bye-bye.